of what we call public opinion was just a manufactured narrative that makes it easier to convince people that if their views are different, then there's something wrong with that or there's something wrong with them. Spending is a tax. As soon as the government spend money, eventually it's a tax. Sometimes we put a direct tax on the people. Sometimes we borrow the money. And sometimes we print the money. Freedom and the dignity of the individual have been more available and assured here than in any other place on earth. The Patrick Riggins Show. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. song you're listening to is entitled Dio. I knew I'd screw this up. <laughs> Dio Political Man. <laughs> it's by Jason Hodge. It's, it's, uh, he's a fan of the show and his people contacted our people and now it's worked into the rotation. So we've played it before on the show in case you think it sounds familiar. Um, and I'm not sure if this is available anywhere on Amazon or anything. We'll We'll check on that and see. <laughs> All right, this is the Patrick Regan Show, coming to you live on the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network and locally on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. We are back again for another hour of way too much to get to and not enough time to get to it. <laughs> but unfortunately, with only an hour a week, this is just how it works out. <laughs> we we do try to get some stuff on Facebook during the week, and we're working on the show website where we'll have even more stuff. So changes are a coming. I think on the website what's taking up time is the transcribing all the shows that we've had up until now. But we have a crack team working on it, or a team on crack, either way. <laughs> as soon as it's ready to go, we'll let you know. This week, I want to start off the first segment of the show with an update on the old NSA spying, which is still occurring with neither Congress nor the administration doing anything about it. The story first appeared uh, in the, it was first reported by the Washington Post this week, and we put it up on our Facebook page the day it broke. Uh, that address, in case you need it, is facebook.com forward slash Patrick Riggins show. You don't have to be a member of Facebook to get to that. Just put that address in, and, and the page will come up. The, uh, the story states that the National Security Agency has broken privacy rules and overstepped its legal authority thousands of times each year since Congress granted the agency broad new powers in 2008, according to an internal audit and other top-secret documents. Most of the infractions involve unauthorized surveillance of Americans and or foreign intelligence targets in the United States, both of which are restricted by statute and executive order. They range from significant violations of law to topographical errors, yeah, right, <laughs> that resulted in unintended interception of U.S. emails and telephone calls. You know... No matter what you want to call this, it's unconstitutional and thus illegal. But is anyone going to lose their job over this? No. 
Is anyone going to be charged with violating the rights of American citizens? Oh, no, of course not. If we do something wrong, we just promise to try and not do it again. <laughs> That's how the government works. The documents, they were provided earlier this summer to the Washington Post by, guess who, former NSA contractor Edward Snowden, include a level of detail and analysis that is not routinely shared with Congress or the special court that oversees surveillance. In one of the documents, agency personnel are instructed to remove details and substitute more generic language in reports to the Justice Department and the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. So, in other words, cover up the fact that detailed spying is going on. <laughs> Actual instructions to cover this up. How is this program still going on? We tried to get this stopped in Congress, but as I covered a few weeks ago, an amendment was defeated that would have limited the spying. Let's see, I've got it right. Okay, yeah, I've got it right here. Here it is. It was an amendment to the Defense Department Appropriations Act of 2014. Now, the primary co-sponsors were just Justin Amish. Amish, I can never get his name right. He's a Republican out of Michigan. John Conyers, he's a Democrat out of Michigan. Thomas Massey, he's a Republican out of Kentucky. Mike Mulvaney, he's a Republican out of South Carolina. And Jared Polis, which is a Democrat out of Colorado. Now, <laughs> those voting against this amendment included Speaker Boehner, who, hey, he's a Republican. House Majority Leader Eric Cantor, also a Republican. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi, a Democrat. House Minority Whip Stenner, Stenny Hoyer, and he's also a Democrat, of course. And along with him, a, a couple other people, notably two that stand out is Michelle Bachman and Daryl Issa. So this was both parties and their leaders both sides of the aisle saying all of this spying is perfectly okay. Everything is just fine. You still don't believe there's really only one party in Washington? You know, they, they call each party the Republican Party and the Democrat Party. What it really is is both of these are really the government party. Don't you think it might be time to kick all these establishment moderates out, both sides, both parties. It's just one big government control party. That's what they want. Getting back to the column here, in one instance, the NSA decided, <laughs> it, it's just, reading this, you almost think this is a satire, but it's not. That's the, that's the sad thing. In one instance, the NSA decided that it need not report the unintended surveillance of Americans. <laughs> In another case, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, which has authority over some NSA operations, did not learn about a new collection method in the, until it had been in operation for many months. Consequently, the court ruled it unconstitutional. So they were already doing this for a, you know many months, is what the story says, until it was ruled unconstitutional. The NSA audit obtained by the Washington Post is dated May 2012, counted 2,776 incidents in the preceding 12 months of unauthorized collection, storage, access to, or distribution of legally protected communications. 2,776 incidents. That's over seven and a half a day. And that's using a full 365-day year, not whatever the work week is for a typical NSA government worker. The May 2012 audit intended for the agency's top leaders counts only incidents at the NSA's Fort Meade headquarters and other facilities in the Washington area. Three government officials speaking on condition of anonymity to discuss classified matters said the number would be substantially higher if it included other NSA operating units and regional collection centers. 
So it just gets more and more. James Clapper, the director of national intelligence, has acknowledged that the court found the NSA in breach of the Fourth Amendment, which prohibits unreasonable searches and seizures. But the Obama administration has fought a freedom of information lawsuit that seeks the opinion. So here it is, this agency, and it's made up of people. The agency is only a name, only a building. It's the people working in this agency doing these things. So we have human beings who violated the Fourth Amendment of citizens of the United States. Now, why aren't these people being brought up on charges? If you violate someone's rights, you can bet you'll be hauled into court to answer for it. But if you work for the NSA, ah, you can do whatever you want and get away with it. I mean, right here it is in black and white. The director of national intelligence has acknowledged that the court found the NSA in breach of the Fourth Amendment, but the Obama administration has fought a freedom of information lawsuit that seeks the opinion. There it is. In other words, the Obama administration doesn't think it has to answer to anyone for violating the rights of American citizens. This just isn't just confined to him, though. George Bush acted the same way, and the media and the liberals howled and moaned about it constantly. But when President Obama is going even further, doing even more to violate the rights of Americans, eh, no one's really saying a word about it. I mean, do you realize this is, a, is a, an impeachable offense that the president who swears to uphold and defend the Constitution, his gang up there is actively violating our rights, spying on all of us. I mean, are you going to do something about it? Or is your television show on? God knows we wouldn't want to interrupt your life to try and save the country. It's better to watch some reality TV in, the, in your nice suite on the Titanic. You know, if all that yelling and screaming out in the hall is, is distracting, just turn the volume up so you don't miss anything. <laughs> hey, uh, wouldn't you know it, we're up on the first break here on the Patrick Riggins Show. Uh, we have a lot to get to this week, and we'll get started after this first break. Be with us here in, uh, uh, what, about a minute and a half. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Patrick Riggins Show here on the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network. Waiting on that part. And News Talk 98.7 WOKI. We're also online at News Talk 98.7.com and Facebook.com forward slash Patrick Reagan Show. I'd like to uh, ask you a question to start off this segment. Can you imagine what your reaction would be if someone was trying to sell you on the idea of government as it, as it exists today? Here you are, humming along, enjoying life, trading and doing business with your family, your friends, your neighbors, even people across the country and around the world. Then someone comes along and says, hey, do you want to try this new thing called government? It's going to cost you some money, but it'll be worth it. So you say, well, tell me a little bit about this thing called government. Oh, it's great. It's going to take money from you and give it to other people who don't want to work or who don't want to participate in the American system of individual responsibility. It's also going to spy on you. It's going to watch everything you're doing on the Internet. It's going to read your emails and watch your videos and intercept your Skype chats. It's going to have access to your every move while you're online. Hey, and not only that, it's going to install cameras around your city so it can watch you out walking around too. It's going to regulate practically every aspect of your entire life. It's going to tell you what kind of cars you can have available for purchase. It's going to tell you who you can hire 
what you have to offer them and benefits, who you can and can't fire. It's also going to need to know where you're making your money, where you're spending it, what you're spending it on. Oh, and, and by the way, when you do spend your money, it's going to add on a tax to whatever you're buying. In every part of your life, it's going to tell you what you can and can't do. And to make sure you comply, it's going to use the force of law to make you live the way it says you should. Now, if you decide you don't want to live in the way the government specifies, then it's going to fine you. It's going to take some of your money to teach you a lesson. If you don't learn from that, then it's going to lock you in a cage until you can learn your lesson, until you can learn to live the way the government dictates you will live. If you want to cross the street, you have to do it where it says you can. If you don't, if you decide that, hey, I'm an adult, and I can safely cross from where I'm standing right now. Well, now you're in danger of getting a ticket, a fine for not acting as the government says you have to. Let's say you're driving on the road. If you drive faster than the speed the government sets, well, you can get a ticket. Oh, oh, and oh, by the way, you also can't drive too slow either because you can get a ticket for that as well. <laughs> And if you decide you just aren't going to play by those rules, the government can take away your driver's license so you can no longer drive your own car on the road you're paying for. <laughs> by the way, real quick, am I the only person who gets irked when the state says driving is a privilege? The fact that the government allows you to drive, you should look at that as a privilege. No, you don't have the freedom to drive if you want to. It's a privilege. You have to get permission from the government. And yes, that's backwards. Look at the Constitution, even your state one. The government gets permissions to do things from the citizens, not the other way around. But ever since you first learned to drive, that fact has been ground into your brain over and over. Driving is a privilege, not a right. But having someone else pay for your shelter, pay for your food, pay for your cell phone, that's not a privilege. That's a right. Oh, oh, and, and medical care, too. That's a right as well. But driving, no, no, that's a privilege. You see how everything's backwards? Now, <laughs> who in their right mind would sign up for all of this? Who would say, oh, boy, that sounds like something I can't pass up. Where do I get this fantastic thing called government? No one would. Well, maybe if you're mentally deficient in some way, but no sane person would agree to all that. Yet, you allow it to go on right now, right this very minute, with not even so much as a whisper of protest. The Egyptians are being slaughtered in the streets of that country, protesting over the president, the president of all things. But in this country... We have a president running roughshod over the Constitution, and the only time people get mad is when a rodeo clown at a state fair wears a mask of Obama. Now the liberals are screaming for blood. The guy playing the clown is getting death threats. All future rodeo clowns at that fair have to undergo sensitivity training. A rodeo clown is required to attend sensitivity training, all because of an Obama mask. Meanwhile... This president is murdering human beings in other countries through unconstitutional drone attacks, killing people without a trial, without any chance to confront their accusers. I went over all this last week and check our archives, youtube.com forward slash Patrick Reagan show. The president, President Barack Obama, authorizing the murder of people and not a word from the liberal side of this country. Heck, we scarcely hear a word out of the conservative side either. It was President Bush that started all this, and President Obama has continued and even expanded it. Yet both sides excuse all of it because everyone up there has blood on their hands. Everyone up there jumped on the kill those terrorists bandwagon. 
You know, no wonder the world hates us. We no longer represent the American dream of freedom and liberty, of fairness and justice. America represents tyranny and oppression. Say or do the wrong thing or even wear an Obama mask and you're attacked. Even have death threats made against you. Live in a foreign country and hang out with someone who has claimed to be a terrorist and you very well might end up being killed in a drone attack. Doesn't matter if you're doing anything wrong or not. You're just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Boom. Another batch of dead alleged terrorists and everyone in Washington pats themselves on the back for murdering more people without really knowing who they are. We're just told they're terrorists and, ah, heck, that's good enough for us. Does this sound to you like how America should be? I certainly don't think so. And unfortunate, or fortunately, a lot of people are starting to agree. So much that it's scaring the establishment of both parties. It's even scaring the conservative talk shows. So much they're starting to sound like me. Now, don't get me wrong, that's a good thing. But if they're going to steal my analysis, I mean, the least they could do is credit me with it. But <laughs> that's why this show is on the fast track to nationwide distribution. What you hear every weekend is original analysis of the issues from an American perspective. Not Democrat, not Republican, not any political party. Just pure, clear, clean American freedom and liberty. If you sit down and think about all this stuff that we're expected to just accept because we've grown up under this kind of system, you'd realize the lack of freedom and liberty that we have in this country today. This is the problem with government. You keep accepting, accepting these little invasions of privacy, these little places in your life where your freedom is being removed. Oh, it's just this one little thing. I'm just giving up some freedom in this one little area. But that's never enough for government. It's going to want more. That's how organizations run by humans evolve. I've talked about it before. It's, it's as simple as a homeowners association. You start it to get the common areas of the neighborhood mowed, maybe watered as well. But within a short time, they're telling you what color you can paint your house, how often you have to mow your own lawn, whether you can have anything parked in your driveway. All of this stuff is sold under the guise of, hey, it's good for the neighborhood. Just like the federal government does now. Hey, it's good for the country. We're doing this to protect you. This government is full of traitors. You say, oh, Patrick, you're being hysterical. You're exaggerating. Well, am I? The NSA is right now violating the constitutional rights of American citizens. We know it is. I talked about it in the first segment of the show today. The government has been spying on American citizens in violation of the United States Constitution. All of this has been happening, yet we only have a handful of whistleblowers come forward, Edward Snowden being the latest. So all these people working in these agencies, they know what they're doing is wrong. They certainly should by now, but they still go to work every day, still punch that time clock, still take that paycheck, just like every other government employee throughout history that oppressed their fellow countrymen. This is, oh, we're coming up on the end of the hour, or, yeah, end of the half hour here. This is, this is what we have to overcome in this country, this blind religious loyalty to everything government and control. We aren't going to do it on a national level, though. It's gone too far for that, and I'll have a solution for that. After we come back from the bottom of the hour break here on the Patrick Riggins Show and the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network and here locally on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. Join us after the break here. Welcome back. Did you hear my head hitting the microphone there? Okay, good. <laughs> Welcome back here to the Patrick Regan Show. Let's get professional now. <laughs> on the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network and News Talk 98.7 of YOKI. Coming back into another huge hour of action-packed and exciting radio. Oh, righty. <laughs> I listened to a number of uh, talk shows during the week from both sides of the ideological divide, but 
I want to comment a little bit on what I've been hearing on the conservative ones lately. They have been devoting, especially here recently, a, a ton of airtime talking about the minute details of Obamacare and how this or that piece of it is bad, but how most Americans don't like this or that little part of it. Every one of these hosts are missing the big picture. Obamacare is not only unconstitutional, it isn't the right thing to do. Obamacare is forcing one American citizen to pay the bills of another. How is that the right thing to do? To do? These people are wasting hours and hours of air time talking about all this. Is it because they don't have anything else to talk about? Can they not prepare a, a good show instead of blowing all this time talking about something we shouldn't be doing in the first place? Instead of trying to decide which part isn't fair, we need to repeal the whole dang thing instead of wasting everyone's time on the details. These people need to be extolling, extolling their audience to, uh, like we do here on this show. You need to call your con congressional representative. Tell them to get rid of this legislation. And don't listen to these spineless people in Washington tell you there isn't anything that can be done. Yes, there is. If enough people are flooding Congress with calls, believe me, they'll do something about it. If they think they might lose the next election, they'll vote how you want them to. The key is generating enough calls to get that message across. Look, Congress can vote to stop all of this tomorrow if they wanted to do so. Even the most diehard liberal will vote to do away with Obamacare if you can generate enough calls to their offices. They want to be in office more than they want to make an ideological point. Most of them do anyway. All these excuses you hear out of the Republican side, all this, oh, we can't do anything about it, that's bull. The reason you only see these little displays of votes against Obamacare is so they'll have something to run on at the next election. If these people are really against it, they'd be making speech after speech on television and in person. That's all we'd hear about, how Obamacare is unconstitutional, if that's what they really wanted to do. But they don't. Here's a little secret in Washington. All these people want government involved in medical care. Just listen to what the conservatives say. They'll say we need to repeal and replace. That's what Romney preached all during his presidential campaign. I played clip after clip after him saying that. And not just him, though. No. Listen to any of these Republicans. They'll tell you how their plan is better than the Democrat one. Hey, neither plan is right because neither plan is constitutional. Forcing one American to pay the bills of another is not right. I don't care how you frame it. This is why we argue against any and all types of governmental aid. All of it. All of this is the forced taking of money from one citizen and giving it to another in the form of charity. How can anyone make the argument that that is the right thing to do? Well, Patrick, we have to take care of other people. No, we don't. Show me in the Constitution where it states that me, citizen of the United States, Patrick Riggins, must care for another person, that I have to pay the bills of another citizen. It's not in there. Because our founders believed in individuals caring for themselves. Now, from a moral point of view, yes, you should help those who cannot help themselves. Not those who choose not to, who choose not to work. Not those who want to live off the system. But those who are truly at the mercy of everyone else. Now, those people are such a small percentage of the overall number of people getting government aid. It wouldn't even show up in the numbers. There are not that many people who are truly needy in this country. But we have a whole lot of people who are willing to let others carry them. But again, that's a moral obligation, not a legal one. Not one the government should be forcing you to participate in. But participate you do. Because if you don't, if you refuse to pay for that sort of thing, well, then they'll take away your property and your freedom if necessary, all in the name of, quote, helping others, unquote. Speaking of Obama, there's been a lot of hay made this week when a poll came out announcing that 62% of Americans disapprove of how Obama's handling the economy. Now, I've listened to the 
liberal commentators and pundits discount the number, saying the poll really didn't mean anything. And I've listened to conservative radio and television show hosts crowing about how this just shows, shows how incompetent Obama is in economic affairs and how his administration is failing the American people. And, you know, this is why you listen to this show right here, because neither of these two sides have it correct. Neither side sees the problem here. The reason is because neither side is looking at this problem from the perspective of an American. They're looking at it from the angle of a liberal American or a conservative American, but neither side looks at it from the angle of a true American because neither side is truly American. They only fight for what's good for their side, not for what's good for the country, not for freedom and liberty. They fight to get the advantage over the other side so their side can win. Whether that's good for the country or not is irrelevant. They just don't care. I mean, note of this last week, it's like two lawyers fighting in a courtroom trying to get a win for their side. Justice is just a side note. If justice is served, well, okay, that's nice, but the real goal is for my side to win. Same thing with these political parties, these liberals and conservatives. If what they're fighting for just happens to be good for the country, too, oh, well, that's good. But if it isn't, it really doesn't matter as long as their side wins. So this poll came out, though, with 62% of Americans disapproving of Obama's handling of the economy, and both sides are trying to use it to their advantage when neither side is working for the good of the country. The truth of the matter is the president and the government should not be interfering with the economy to begin with. The poll should be that 100% of Americans disapprove of the government, let alone the president, sticking their noses into the private business of American citizens. The government should have nothing to do with the economy. It shouldn't be trying to regulate interest rates. It shouldn't be trying to regulate the money supply. It shouldn't be doing any of that. But it is. And we accept it as the normal thing that should be happening. The premise of this whole question is wrong. It is being asked with the assumption that the government should be interfering with this country's economy when it shouldn't. That should be the question. When your conservative friends come to you bragging about this number, the first thing you should tell them is the government shouldn't be intruding into the economy in the first place. The only problem is they don't believe in that. Along with the liberals, conservatives just want the government sticking its nose into everyone's life, personal and business. They just want it done in a way with which they agree. Same thing happens on the foreign policy stage. All these people are getting killed in Egypt, and Congress and the president are going back and forth about should we be withholding military aid, should we be withholding governmental aid. And it's like you're missing the point. We shouldn't be giving them any aid at all. Think about this. What is this aid? Where does it come from? It comes from the American taxpayer. Our government is forcing, is saying it is going to force us, the American taxpayer, to send the, our money to the people of another country to pay their bills. It's bad enough our country's doing it, or government's doing it within this country, but an outside one? I have to pay the bills for not only other American citizens, but now I have to pay the bills of Egyptians too. And it's not just Egypt. We send foreign aid all around the world, courtesy of the United States taxpayer. Oh, I'm getting frustrated here. <laughs> We're up on the last break here on the Patrick Regan Show when we come back, we'll have a couple of ideas on how to fix all of this when we come back after this break. And welcome back to the Patrick Regan Show. We're in the last segment here on the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network and News Talk 98.7 WOKI. This short is, this segment is always short. And uh, today, especially so, I've been just running over my breaks all, all hour. But hopefully I can get to most of this column I want to talk about. The, the author is Brian Roberts, and it ran over on the Tenth Amendment Center's website this week. Now, what Mr. Roberts is addressing is what I've been talking about on this show since it started, how to promote freedom and liberty. And he has some good points, and I want to highlight a few for you right now here on the show. He begins the column with these three assertions. Number one, the establishment promotes political ideas that accrue power at the expense of the people's economic and civil liberty. Point two, 
the establishment promotes political tactics that encourage those involved to focus attention on the federal government where the message can be controlled. And his third point is liberty effect, liberty efforts will ultimately fail, not because they reject establishment ideas, but because they continue to limit themselves to establishment endorsed tactics. So what he's stating here is you're trying to fight on the establishment's field using their rules and it won't work or it won't work well. You might get some traction here or there, but overall you're probably failing your goal to educate others on a national basis. He says what we are faced with is a David versus Goliath scenario. When presented with this scenario, the natural inclination is to attack the problem head on at the top. Logically, this seems like the best way to achieve rapid results. However, a federal presidential race is not a strategically viable point of attack for serious grassroots efforts. Even federal offices are generally untouchable because the people lack the organization and financial ability to compete at that level. Attempts by the liberty movement to, quote, vote them out or sign a petition or write a letter, they're ignored and fail consistently. This defeat comes not because the limited government idea succumbs to superior debate or more powerful political ideas, but primarily because the chosen tactics cannot overcome the brute force of mass media and old-school political influence. In order to compete with this mass media monopoly, the liberty movement must adopt a strategy that builds on the strengths of the movement itself and acknowledges the lack of access to mass media. This is a marketing strategy that requires adherence to segmentation or decentralization. In our case, states provide a natural point of segmentation, as America is composed of various sovereign states with clearly identifiable yet diverse political priorities. And he also goes on to say, for those who who are not convinced the small versus big strategy is well documented. In the corporate world, small companies face challenges such as this quite often when engaged with large Fortune 500 companies. There are specific marketing strategies which win, and there are others which invariably lose. When these small companies compete on a battlefield chosen by their larger competitor, they lose. However, when small companies employ a different tactic that segments customers in ways larger companies cannot, they win. Now, his advice is, is to work on these issues in politics locally and regionally and stick to principles at, and ideas at the national level. The establishment of both parties will seek to, and the media, will seek to hijack regional messages and force debate at the national level, and this can't be allowed. He says once it, that's accepted, the issues should be fought at that national level. Liberty has already lost. The most divisive issues with the least impact on liberty will be highlighted while the true issues of political power will be decided without debate. Hello, Trayvon Martin. Hello, so-called race issues. Hello, rodeo clown. Anything to distract you from the revelations about the government violating your rights. This is exactly why you wonder, why are they making such a big deal out of this? Why do they make a big deal out of this one incident and not a big deal out of another, which is essentially the same thing? This is why right here, and I'll read it again. The most divisive issues with the least impact on liberty will be highlighted while the true issues of political power will be decided without debate. It's the same message I've been giving you. I just used the image of an adult, adult jingling their keys to keep the baby distracted and quiet. That's what the government, the establishment of both parties, and the media all do to the American people. They distract you with some little trivial incident while they quietly work through the big problem of taking away more of your freedom without being caught again. Start watching, and, and you'll see that whenever news breaks, the IRS scandal or Edward Snowden in a... NSA spying, we have Ob Obamacare problems. Whenever news happens that negatively impacts the government, the media working with the establishment, they'll immediately swing into action to distract you with something else so you won't pay attention to the real problem. This is 
the problem we're having here in America. And the way you can get around this is keep listening to this radio show and, and tell others to as well. We're working hard to build this into a national voice for true American freedom and liberty. But just like reforming government, it's going to take you calling your local talk radio show, telling them you want this show carried on it too. If, you, if we're already on in your area, listen to it and, and call the station and tell them, hey, you made a wise choice putting Patrick on. Oh, we're up on the end of the show here. If you want more information about us, go to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Patrick Riggins Show. Also on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Patrick Riggins Show. And you can email us again, Patrick Riggins Show at gmail.com. And remember, in everything you're doing, liberty begins with you. Join me next Saturday afternoon at 4. We'll be fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. Thanks for listening, and have a great week. Join us again next week for a solid dose of truth on The Patrick Riggins Show.